G'day folks and welcome to another jam-packed episode on aquaponics. This week we'll be looking at how much air you need in your tank for your fish. Also adding a rain gutter grow system to your aquaponics. A quick look at how to deal with high pH water if you're drawing from a well. And then to finish off we'll be chatting about chinampers and having a little bit of discussion on whether I think they're aquaponics or not. So the topics covered in this week's video are from a live hangout we held a number of weeks ago. We're actually trying to hold them fairly regularly at least once a month and Bianca's coming along to help with the um, questions that we get in the chat. Uh, quick explanation, sorry for the uh, poor quality of the chat in some places. Bianca's mic and mine were doing a little bit of an echo thing but it only lasts for a couple of seconds. So I'll pretty much we'll stop prattling on and we'll um, kick it off with looking at how much air I recommend to put in the fish tank to keep your fish happy. Jake, how do you calculate the amount of oxygen per fish via air pump? Um, I think the easiest way, there, there are full-on equations if you get into aquaculture, but they're also talking about very heavily densely stocked systems. With aquaponics, backyard aquaponics, and even smaller commercial ones, if you are doing a sensible stocking density in your fish tank, so one fish per 25, or you could roughly say 20 to 25 litres, of water in the actual fish tank itself. And I work on the same turnaround as water in the tank. So I want an 1,000 litre tank or a 260 gallon tank. I want 1,000 litres of air going in there, minimum per hour. I actually have more than that going in there all the time. I think I have a 4,500 litre per hour um, air system and I've got it going in through a very large silica glass stones it has a very high flow rate and I have the air split between that and my biofilter so I know I'm getting a couple of thousand litres worth of air going into the fish tank all the time so the fish are doing really well oxygen wise but that's that's the minimum I would work on 1000 litres in a 1000 litre tank or 260 gallons in a 260 gallon IBC tank also too I know it's a little bit harder uh, for you folks in the state because I think you work in cubic feet um, of air whereas over here all our pumps are sold as um, litres per hour so if you can do that conversion hopefully that'll help you out. Antonio has asked how can I integrate a rain gutter grow system into aquaponics? Rain gutter grow system for you folks who don't know Larry Hall rest in peace mate um, he came up with an idea it's a basically a gutter um, and it's got a tray over the top to stop algae growing and then you get um, containers or root pouches, he was selling them, and you put a neck cup in the base. That neck cup goes and sits into the gutter, the rain gutter, and water wicks up into that and then into the medium. Uh, soil was pretty much all what they use. Hucho has done some fantastic one over on his channel um, where he's um, done wicking wedge, which is a very similar idea. It's a grow bag or basically a, a bag of cocoa peat and he's made up these little 3D printed wedges that go through the bag and um, you just basically push the bag down onto it and those wedges sit in a rain gutter and they wick up hydroponic nutrient in that um, instance and feeds the plant that way. Um, to do it with aquaponics though, uh, I would use soil. Um, so you'd have your rain gutter, you'd have your net pot going down, whether you're using containers or some sort of fabric pot for your air pruning and let the aquaponic water come up and just add a little bit of extra nutrient. And that way you'll end up with a, um, a nice healthy soil blend uh, feeding the plants as well as a little bit of extra nutrient coming up through the bottom. So very easy to do. The water from the grow gutter though, I would have circulating around. I wouldn't leave it in there because it will go manky very quickly, go very anaerobic. Uh, there's a lot of organics in the aquaponics water. I can guarantee you if you let it sit in the gutter, it will go pretty rancid pretty quickly. Um, you can actually extrapolate that out larger into wicking beds. You can have flow through wicking beds down the bottom. Uh, Larry over on his channel, I've mentioned him loads of times, um, not set up with aquaponics, but he basically has a flows through system that goes through the base of his wicking bed down into a sump tank and then comes back round again. I've just seen a quick one pop up here. Mr. Nunn, is rainwater better than tap water to use in the system since I have the ability to choose? My deep well water is 8.9. Um, of iron and calcium haven't tested the rainwater uh, maybe if you do a, um, a blend of both mate um, that would really help because that calcium uh, will help add not only calcium for the plants but also help uh, keep your um, pH 
nice and high, buffered. Uh, you'll be adding a lot, a fair amount of alkalinity into the system. So maybe even a blend of it to begin with to try and get that pH down to probably um, 7.3 or lower. And then when you do your top-ups, as you'll find over time, the alkalinity will be stripped from the system. If you grow a large enough system with enough fish, um, that top-up water being fairly alkaline and having a bit of iron and that in there will help add those elements into the system, help buffer your pH up a little bit because you'll only be adding a small amount at a time. So it's actually a um, good s situation for you to be in. Just will need a little bit of tinker tinkering with, playing around with, testing just to make sure you can work out what sort of balance you need um, to use that uh, that really super rich water as a bit of a benefit to the system so i hope that helps mr mum are you still working on the guides i am still I am working, still working, working on my question, indeed um folks we've had a lot going on behind the scenes i've had to take uh basically i hop up in the morning at about um well i turn the computer on around about seven ish in the morning and i turn it off at six at night and in between, I'm running down and doing bits and pieces downstairs. And I'm working pretty much all online all the time, either answering emails or questions. Um, it may not seem like it lately. We've had a bit of family Hi. stuff pop up. And I've had to look after family members and friends. And um, they come first. So I haven't been doing a lot on the guides. I have finished the Bell Siphon one to the point where all I need to do is make up two photos. With the guides, they're a video guide, basically. And that's how they sell them and promote them. If I'm going to produce something, I want it to help you guys as much as I can. So I'm making the PDFs. If you um, have bought the guide, um, go over and look at the Chop and Flip one. Um, there is a PDF download on there. And that'll give you some idea of what I'm trying to achieve. You're basically getting little chapters of books along with the video portion of those guides. And the Bell Siphon one is pretty much well done. And there's a lot more involved in that than what's all included in that information wise than what you're getting out of the video side of it. There is a new guide coming. I will be looking at um, making up a three bed IBC system. I was actually going to make it up and run it for a year and have the running of an IBC system as an add-on later on. But just up in air with what we're going to do, whether we're going to stay here, whether we're going to sell up and move, I don't want to create a whole aquaponics area just to pull it down because to tell you the truth, folks, while everyone here may think aquaponics is fun and interesting, uh, trying to sell a house with an aquaponics system can be a little bit of a uh, downer for folks and will reduce the price of what we can get for it because most people don't care about growing their own food. So um, yeah, I think we might wait off before we do the big systems down the track. So those, yeah, but those guys will be coming. Sorry if I butcher your name. Nazreen Johnson said, is it expensive to do aqua? And then has a two-parter. I want to buy a farm in Queensland. But Want to go halves? Funding, so we all share any ideas. Uh, Aquaponic uh, systems can be extremely expensive if you go out and you buy purpose-made um, components. Um, we're talking backyard level here. If you're going commercial, if you can afford the best, go for the best. Um, design the system first before you buy anything. But if your backyard aquaponics doesn't have to be expensive at all, you can use IBCs, the cage totes. I've seen them for sale here in Australia or anywhere from $50 all the way up to a couple of hundred, depending on um, what you want. The 200 litre or 50 gallon barrels, I've picked them up for as little as anything for $10. Clean them out, um, give them a good scrub. A big tip there, people ask me all the time, it's had this chemical in it, can I um, use it for aquaponics? Look it up online. Um, I'm only going to have to search it for you. Um, look up the medical data safety sheet, um, see um, how toxic it is, or ring the people who make the um, substance and ask them how to clean it up to make it food safe. Also, to your plumbing, I would buy brand new. I wouldn't use secondhand sewer line that someone's pulled out of their backyard for your plumbing. Definitely buy brand new. The same with your pumps. There are a lot of cheaper import ones that are very reliable. We've bought uh, what I would call mid-range pumps, the j -Bow, um, and also Sun Sun. My Sun Sun pumps are the only pumps that are running from day dot. I'm using my original one to drain the um, radial flow settler at the moment. A lot of them will work well. Uh, with the plumbing though, if you want to look for cheap, um, keep the price down. Look at online wholesalers. Here in Australia, we have some mom and pop wholesalers for PVC pipe rather than going to the big box stores because they're not cheap, folks. Um, they're really not as cheap as they'd have you believe. You can find a lot better prices if you shop around online from smaller distributors. Um, so it can be cheap to do, just you have to do your due diligence. I have seen a lot of cheap aquaponic systems come up online on Facebook. 
yeah, people just getting out of it. A lot of Victorians are moving north. Please stop. You're making it very expensive for Bianca and I to buy a property. Um, and they're selling up on some cases, even giving away their um, systems down south. So have a look on groups online and you might um, find a uh, buy, a really cheap one come up. Have you thought about burying totes and connecting them for Chinampa style gardening? The Chinampas, I know everyone likes to say Chinampas are the first aquaponic system. Chinampas are growing in soil and organic matter, which means the plants are deriving nutrients from the soil and organic matter. I don't know if you know how Chinampas are made. Um, but my basic understanding is they create a raft, they put organic matter on top of that, and then they plant plants into it. They're basically a lot of organic matter. The plants are feeding off that. There are fish in the water, granted, and they will be producing elements, but I would think the floor and the ecosystem within the ponds the Chinampas are built or the waterway swamp, they're looking after that nitrogen and that effluent load anyway. Naturally, that's how I see Chinampas and other people as well who don't like to be yelled at online because everyone likes to think the Chinampas were the first aquaponic system. Now, I do think, and it's very good to see um, Steve pop up there, that dual root zone is a way to go. If you can design a soil blend that's going to be great for your plants and then you're adding in all these extra nutrients as well, you're looking after the waste from the fish, so the fish are happy on their side, why not take advantage of it? And if you want to make it a Chinampa style, um, go for it. To make life easier on yourself, use an IBC tray, have some sort of media in there to stop algae growing in the nutrient-rich water as it floods across, um, like the clay balls in the bathtub system I have, and then pop your dirt bag or um, your lined um, pot so the soil can't get out and, and just run it that way and make life a lot easier. I know um, Steve has, he's actually got a YouTube video online where he's talking about the design of his dual root zone. He goes through and explains deep, um, dual root zone a little bit better than I can. I've only done very rudimentary ones and I know he's, um, he's probably um, elaborates on it a lot more than myself. I actually want to play around with that and sand gardening um, I want to do the two side by side and see how we go, um, as well as the traditional, um, because media bed, growing with media bed, I mean, there's soil and there's sand and there's your normal media bed, there's deep water culture. Uh, some people say that us media bed growers are idiots, you know, need to grow deep water culture. So everyone has their own little niche. I'm open to anything and everything. So yeah, I want to have a, a good crack at um, um, giving a decent shot with all these different growth systems. And unfortunately, our property here uh, just isn't large enough to accommodate that sort of thing. So for you folks who want to learn more about aquaponics, don't forget we do have our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide, 1995 US, link down below and a little button will pop up here at the end. As well as that, I have loads of free content here on YouTube as well, so don't forget to suss out those playlists when they pop up up there. But I will pretty much well leave it there. Thank you all very much for coming along. Thanks to all the supporters out there, and I will catch you all next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.